Hello everyone and I hope that you're doing well. Today we're doing a BJC General Science paper review. This is a paper one from the year 2022. Please remember, before you start the examination, you should always write your school number, your candidate number, your initials, and also your surname. As always, please remember to read through the instructions carefully. And if you should have any questions or queries, please clarify those with the examiner before the examination begins. Now let us jump into question number one. And question number one reads, which cell changes its length and shape to produce motion? And this has to deal with the muscle cell. And so therefore option A is correct. Um, what you can do, you can also pause um, the video as well and look at the labelings for anything that I've labelled. And so for example, red blood cell, root ear cell, sperm cell. And so you need to be familiarised with some of these um, structures as well. Their functions, where they produce and so on in the body. Now, for question number two, we said which cell absorbs light so that photosynthesis can take place, and photosynthesis takes place in plants, and so looking for a plant cell, and so we have um, a, a skeletal muscle right here, and so that could not be the answer. The other three, they are plant cells, but they are different parts of a plant. So the general plant cell that contains chloroplasts will be option B, which is the correct answer. C is a phloem, and D is a root ear cell. And for C and D, photosynthesis um, do not occur in those two cells. But question number three, is that which plant organ is responsible for reproduction? And that is the flower. All right, the flower is responsible to produce pollen and also ovules. All right, let's jump into the next question. Question number four, is that which of the following is a good conductor of electricity? And right off the bat, that is metal. All right. Um, the others, they are considered to be insulators. All right. Um, what I'm going to do is explain questions that need explanation. So I'm just going to go through as fast as possible. Question number five. We said the diagram shows a flower that is wind pollinated. In other words, it means that wind will carry the pollen from the anther to the stigma of the next flower. All right, and so let's go to the question part of it. He said, which of the following shows the definition of pollination? And so pollination is when um, pollen is transferred from the anther to the stigma of another flower and, or even the same flower. And so therefore, option D is correct. And again, you need to know the two types of pollination. You have cross-pollination, you have cell-pollination. And so in this case, it will be a cross-pollination because it, one, it moved from one flower to another flower, so that is cross-pollination. If it is for the same flower, and that is self-pollination. All right, number six. It's a which row shows how one type of sex cell is transported so that fertilization can occur in a flowering plant. And the correct option here is option C. And so looking at the male sex cell, and it is in the pollen. All right, the female sex cell is in the ovary. So no other options um, are correct. All right, so option C is the correct option there. Question number seven. Is a water molecule is made up of three atoms. It said, what is the meaning of the word atom? All right, and before I go to the answer, I just want to point out something here. So even though there are three atoms in water, there are only two elements, oxygen and hydrogen. All right, so two elements, but three atoms. So we have two atoms of hydrogen, and one atom of oxygen. All right, so the meaning of atom is the smallest particle of matter, and so therefore option C is correct. For number eight, is that what is the correct chemical formula for table salt, and table salt is sodium chloride, and so therefore um, option C is correct. CO2 is carbon dioxide, and I know you know that. HCl is hydrochloric acid, and NH3 is ammonia. All right, question number nine. So the chart indicates the pH of different facial washes um, compared to that of healthy skin. And so let me just go down to the bottom of the chart. And so on the Y, we have the pH measures, and then we have the different um, facial washes and healthy skin on the X. And so... The question asks, is to use the pH chart. Let me go up a little bit so you will see the question better. Is to use the pH chart to describe um, Amlin's facial wash. 
And so Hamlin's facial wash is 5.5 pH. All right. And so since it's 5.5, then it will be slightly acidic. And I just want to make a point here. And notice that acid ranges from 0 to 6. The lower the number is the stronger the acid, right? 7 is neutral, and base or alkaline is from 8 to 14. And so therefore, since Amlin's is 5.5, it's only slightly acidic. All right? And if, even if they have acidic, then that would also work as well. All right? But the lower the number, the stronger the acid. Number 10. It's a which statement accurately describes mass and weight. And so... Option C is correct that because mass is the amount of matter in a substance, all right, and weight now is a force that depends on gravity. A matter of fact, how to calculate weight, weight is mass times gravity. So let's put that in real quick. So to find weight, weight equals to mg, which is mass times gravity. All right. Um, and remember, please remember that mass, um, that weight is a force, right? And also, what you need to know is that mass never change for the same object. However, weight can change based upon gravity. So if we take something to the moon, the mass remains the same, but the weight will change because gravity is different on the Earth compared to the moon. All right, question number 11. Is that which of the following is not an activity that causes animals to become extinct? And so right off the bat, recycling is a really good thing because that preserves the environment, and so it is not a feature or action that cause animals to go extinct. All right, of course, overhunting, introduction of predators, habitat destruction definitely could cause uh, extinction of different animals or organisms. Question number 12. It's a name is simple machine shown in the diagram. And this is a well, very old time type of well collecting water in well. And so this is a wheel and axle, all right? That's the wheel and axle. That's where turning will take place by an handle and cause an axle to, to rotate. And that will help to pull the bucket up or release it down into the well. All right, so question number 13. It said, which is an example of a third-class lever? And so I just want to point out something right here. To determine the type of levers, um, you can use the acronym FLE. And so what this means is that any of these in the middle that determines the type of lever. So let me explain. Now, if you have fulcrum in the middle, then that is a first class. If you have the load in the middle, that's a second class. And if you have E in the middle, which is effort, then that is a third class. So simple, in the order, FLE is based on what is in the middle. And so option A and B, they are technically the same because the effort will be in the middle, and so therefore effort comes third, so it is a third-class lever. So both of them are technically third-class levers. All right, the, the fulcrum is where turning takes place, all right, and so the pen will turn at the point, all right, the effort is in the middle, and the entire pen itself is a load. Just like when you're sweeping a broom, you put the effort in the middle of the broom, and turning takes place at the base of the broom, and the upward, upward part of the broom will be considered as a weight. Um, a doorknob of this type is really a wheel and axle. A scissors, notice the fulcrum in the middle, so this will be a first class. All right? So you can use FLE to determine um, different classes of levers or simple machines. Question number 14. So what is the difference between a conductor and an insulator? And a conductor allows energy or current to flow through it, and an insulator now will prevent or restrict the flow of energy or current. All right, and also you have conductor of heat as well, so it could be heat. And in this case, they refer to heat because heat is a form of energy. Now, question number 15 is a named equipment used to break up white light into colors, and that is a prism. That's right off the bat. And please remember the seven um, colors that make up white light. Roy G. Biv. Let me just write it down real quick. So the colors that you'll get in white light is Roy G. Biv. All right, and so you have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. All right, and so you need to know that those are the colors of a rainbow. Question number 16. So which method of heat transfer is shown at X? And so um, at Y, we have convection. At Z, we have conduction. And at X, we have radiation. So you can notice the heat is moving in a form of waves or rays. 
And so therefore, radiation is correct answer for that one. Question number 17 is so which Bahamian ecosystem acts as a buffer from the impact of storms and grows in brackish water? From a sea brackish water, you know that is a mangrove. And so C is a mangrove. So A is like a rocky shore. Right? It's almost like a sandy beach, but it's really a rocky shore. If you look closely, um, we have a coral reef. We have a mangrove. And this is a red mangrove, actually. And this is a normal plant. So it could just be a woodland. Um, question number 18. It said, what phenomenon is shown in the diagram? I noticed um, the man is standing on the bank. You have water and you have a rock and he's seeing the rock. And so notice the ray of light. It actually bends. And the bending of light is called refraction. All right. And so bending of light rays or bending of light, that is refraction. All right. So question number 19. So what type of mirror? is used by dentists while examining small cavity in the teeth. And so that is a concave because a concave mirror actually magnifies the object. All right? So it made the object look larger. Question number 20. So what is the function of a circuit breaker? And a circuit breaker is really to actually break a circuit to prevent excess current from flowing and is a protective device as well to protect your devices or equipment in or appliances in your house. And so what it does is to interrupt electric current when there is too much flow. All right? And so I actually could explain this a little bit simpler. It's simple to break the current, um, break the current or turn the circuit off or put a break in the circuit to prevent excess flow of current. Again, a circuit breaker is a protective device. Question number 21 is, what is the greatest hazard when live, uninsulated wire is left um, sticking out of a wall? So which means there's no insulator on it. It's just the bare wire. And so therefore, it is a possibility of shock, electrical shock. Question number 22 is, which row in the table shows the correct information about the, uh, herbivores and carnivores? And herbivores eat plants only. So option D is correct, and carnivores, they eat meat only. And remember that omnivores, they eat both plants and animals, or meat. Question number 23, this is a relatively easy paper. Not much explanation needed. The questions are really straightforward. It says, which invasive species destroy, um, destroy sand dunes and is commonly found growing along uh, shorelines in the Bahamas? And this is the casserina plant. All right, the casserina plant is really invasive. In fact, what it does is poison most, well, poison the soil based on the um, leaflets that fall from it. And so most times you see a casserine, you will not see other plants growing there. Question number 24. It said, which of the following is not a source of air pollution? And straight off the bat, you see plastic bags. Plastic bags are solid waste. They actually pollute the land, not here. But burning wood definitely produce carbon dioxide and so on. Car exhaust produce carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide if it's incomplete combustion. And fossil fuel, definitely, when you're burning fossil fuel, um, certainly you produce carbon dioxide as well. So C is a correct option. And I know that most of you know that because that is a straightforward um, answer. Question number 25, you said, give one harmful effect of pollution on the coral reef. And pollution does not improve habitat, so A could not be the answer. But organisms can die, definitely. Is a sunlight um, is received better, cannot be, because if you have um, pollution, then it could block sunlight from going into the water. Organisms have more to eat, not true, because it kill the food sources. So that without no doubt, question 25 is B. 26. They said, what is an NPK fertilizer? And um, pretty much, they said, which is an NPK fertilizer? Not what is in, but what is an NPK fertilizer? And that is artificial fertilizer. And there's a point to note that N represents nitrogen. That is, very, that is very important for plant growth. You have phosphorus. That is important for the strengthening of the plant. And you have potassium, which is K. That is used for fruit and flower development. All right. Um, there are the compost, humus, natural fertilizers. They are not NPK. All right. Question number 27. is that Which substance added to the soil provides nutrients and is the most environmentally friendly and so here is manure right it's organic all right so it provides a lot of nitrates to plants and so plants will grow really healthy question number 28 
It's so which property of air is being demonstrated in this simple laboratory experiment. And so you have two nice answers here, to be honest with you. Um, air as mass and air as weight. Those are the two nice answers. But weight is the better one. I'm going to tell you why. In fact, mass determines weight. Because once you have a mass, you can have a weight because of gravity, right? But why C is a better answer? Because weight is a force. And if you notice in the first diagram, the, the anger with the, with the two balloons inflated, it is, it is balanced, right? However, if you burst one of the balloons, you notice the anger will twist to one side. So if you notice here, this is going down this way. And really because there's a force. Because in this case, these two forces are equal, right? So the anger will be stable. And so a force is either a push or a pull. And so since the anger is going down, then weight is a better option because weight is a force. All right. And so that's why um, option C is the best and not B. All right. But if you do not have mass, you cannot have weight. All right. Because weight is mass times gravity. But again, C is the best answer. All right. C is the best answer. All right. So question number 29. It said, which of the following is... A use of oxygen and combustion because combustion is the burning of anything. Uh, and when you're burning anything, you require oxygen. Without oxygen, you cannot have combustion. And so baking, uh, bread, bread making, you require carbon dioxide from the yeast. And that's why I make the bread rise. Uh, making fizzy drinks is carbonated water. So the carbon dioxide in the drink make it fizzy. Photosynthesis requires carbon dioxide. So when plants are photosynthesizing, they require carbon dioxide. All right, question number 30. Let me go down a little. Let me go up a little bit. All right, so question number 30 said, which pair of substances shown the parts of a solution? And a solution is a mixture of solute and solvent. And um, they come together in a homogeneous way, which means they become uniform. You can't tell the difference between a solute and a solvent right? because the solute will dissolve in the solvent. Question number 31. It said, why is water known as the universal solvent? And simply because it can be used to dissolve many different substances. Um, this paper is relatively straightforward, I must say that. A uh, relatively easy paper. Um, question number 32, it said, the eventual result of an imbalanced diet is what? And in this case, now we have two options, if you notice it. Because one could be malnutrition and the other one could be obesity. And the reason for choosing these two options is that if you have an imbalanced diet, then not getting enough nutrients, then you can be malnourished. And if you're consuming excess nutrients, then that can lead to obesity. All right? All right. So option A and B and C, they are correct options for 32. Um, poverty is a cause, right? It, will be, it can be a cause of imbalanced um, diet. Now, 33. It's a name, the nutrient needed by every cell for every process in the body. And so it said for every, and this is the key part for every process. And so what is the answer right here? All right. Fat is used for certain things. Protein is used for certain things. Vitamins is used for certain things. But what is needed for almost all processes in the body? All right. So definitely D is correct. And that's why we need to consume water. Water is very important. Question number 34. So which picture represents a balanced meal? And so chicken alone is just protein. Um, sweets alone would just be your carbohydrates or sugar. Vegetables alone would be your, your fiber and your vitamins. And of course, get some water into it because not naturally, fruits will have some amount of water. But a balanced meal would be like your protein, your carbohydrates, the vegetables, a mix of different things, right? So D is a better option. All right, so 35 is a consuming more calories than you burn each day results in what? And if you consume more than what you're burning off, then of course you have weight gain. All right, again, that is a straightforward thing. Uh, metabolism doesn't mention this. Metabolism refers to the chemical reactions in the body. All right. Um, 36, it's a which structure carries sperm and urine out of the human body. And I label this diagram for you so you can just pause it and go through different labelings to make sure you know the parts and also the functions of those parts. Please do that. And so what takes urine out of the body and sperm is the urethra, all right? 
So the urethra is for both reproductive and excretory system. All right, and that is labeled C. 37, it said the cell that forms during fertilization um, is a or an, and that's a zygote. Um, and just to run through this, that gametes are what we call sex cells. And so sex cells are either eggs or sperms. All right, so we have two types of gamete. So the male gamete is the, is the sperm and the female gamete is the egg. Once they come together, it's fertilization. And what is formed is a zygote. Zygote turns into embryo. Embryo turns into the fetus. All right, so you need to know that as well. For 38, I said, which of the following um, contraceptive method is taken orally and is not a barrier method? And that one is the pill. All right, IUD is a mechanical thing and, is, and IUD means intra- uterine device all right um condom diaphragm they are mechanical um con contraceptives 39 which method is suitable to absorb water from food and sh and slow the growth of bacteria so it's a absorb water from food that's a key part here and also slow the growth of bacteria um canning freezing pasteurization they do slow the growth of bacteria but they do, not, they do not absorb water. And so the only one that actually absorbs water uh, and actually slow the growth of bacteria is actually salt. Salting, because most bacteria cannot grow in salt. All right, and take out the moisture because some bacteria, well, most bacteria require moisture to, um, to grow and develop. And so if you think about codfish, right, which is salted codfish, um, it, that could be in the open for a period of long time. And so because it's become pretty much dry, the water is out, the moisture is out, Bacteria do not survive in that condition that easily. Now, for the very last question, they say which one, which one major disadvantage of, op of operating a nuclear power plant to generate electricity, and a disadvantage here that to generate uh, nuclear energy, it's really a very expensive process. All right, so this was a very easy paper, I must admit, very easy to go through, very straightforward. All right, so I thank you for watching, and please. Um, Take good care of yourself and good luck on the examination. And please also help to spread this review as well. So take care and be blessed. Talk to you soon.